Hello, I'm Adam Barillet and welcome to this Crystal Connections video. We're exploring Moonstone. Moonstone isn't just a white crystal, in fact it comes in a whole variety of colours. You can also find Moonstone in a peach colour, in a grey colour, there's a brown Moonstone that can be found, and a rare find, which is a good find indeed if you can find one, is a green Moonstone. Another one of my favourites is the Black Moonstone. But today we're going to be exploring that White Moonstone, or what is also commonly known as Rainbow Moonstone. Because it has a, a deep blue normally, or a different rainbow sheen that will, when caught in the light, will kind of dance across the surface of the stone. Having that deep blue or that indigo sheen in it can really help your intuitive and your psychic skills. So it's a really good one when you're doing any psychic or intuitive work. Uh, you can either hold it against your third eye chakra or just wearing it nearby will really help. The premier time to work with Rainbow Moonstone is when the moon is full. Now I will, you'll always see around the full moon I'll be wearing my Moonstone pendant and my Moonstone ring. And the reason I do that is because Moonstone helps us to align with the energy of the moon. Now what tends to happen around the full moon? People feel a little bit crazy, they have problems sleeping, you know, that's where the word lunatic comes from. And what happens is, what, is in our common day society, we tend to just kind of go about our every day. We don't change with the changes of the moon or the cycles of the moon. Now when you take time to sit out under the moon, when the moon is most powerful, when it's full, how do you feel? It's very magical, peaceful, restful, nurturing and intuitive as well. And what happens when we're not working in alignment with that energy when the moon is full, we start to get agitated. Why do we have problems sleeping when the moon is full? Normally because our intuition's on high gear and we're trying to get these intuitive messages, but we're also, we're trying to receive these, but we're trying to sleep at the same time. Or we're trying to go rush about our day in our normal chaotic day when moonstone and the full moon is trying to get us to just rest. So wearing Moonstone when the moon is full helps you to align with that energy and just go about your day. It doesn't mean that you have to sit around and do nothing all day, but just go about that day a little bit more gentle, a little bit more nurturing, and to open up that intuition to work with the energy of the moon rather than work against it. And that's why I really like to wear Rainbow Moonstone around the full moon. Rainbow Moonstone has a very motherly or divine feminine or goddess energy about it. And so whenever you're starting a new project, it's very nurturing and protective, just like a new mother. So Rainbow Moonstone is great to work with whenever you have a new business starting up, or a new project, or you're starting a new job, or a new relationship as well. Work with this so that it's, the, it's protected and guided and everything goes really well. It's also really important that we give the amount of attention that this new project is deserves because a new child needs to be looked after just like a new project does and so Moonstone helps you to make sure that you have enough energy and care for a new project. It's also really good for anyone trying to fall pregnant. What you do is I use it in a bit of a triplet. I give the Moonstone, the Rainbow Moonstone to the mother because that helps to regulate her cycles, her moon cycles. Give Carnelian to the father because that helps with his virility. And then also combine that with a green crystal, ideally a green aventurine or an emerald. Now this triplet helps really well to bring that new birth and new creation into the world. What you can do is she can carry the moonstone, he carries the carnelian and keep the green crystal in the bedroom. At night, create a grid by putting that on her side of the bed, the carnelian on his side of the bed and then the green crystal at the base of the bed creating that triangle. Not only can you use Rainbow Moonstone to nurture and protect your own new projects, but also other things as well. Moonstone is really protective of native butterflies, dragonflies and moths. And you can also use Rainbow Moonstone in meditation to send peaceful, nurturing, motherly energy to war-torn or areas where there's actual conflict. Sit down, feel the energy of the crystal and then send that soft white energy out to that area that needs it. To help it calm down and feel more soothed. Rainbow Moonstone is a traveller's stone, so if you're going away, take one with you, or if a loved one is going on holidays, then give them one so they can carry it. The saying says that wherever the moon shall shine, shall you be protected when you carry a moonstone. And like that nurturing, protective, loving mother, the moon and the goddess energy 
resonates with that moonstone that you're carrying and make sure that you don't get into trouble. Because Rainbow Moonstone has that blue sheen and opens up your intuition, it helps you to be a bit more alert when you're in foreign areas as well. So it helps you avoid getting into danger or pickpockets or thieves. It can also be really useful at night because if you've traveled over long distances and you're suffering from jet lag, Rainbow Moonstone helps to get your circadian cycles back into sync. So what you do is you just pop that back into a pillow slip and sleep with it there overnight and it'll help to get those cycles back. This can also be really good at home if you work shift work or you've had a few late nights and you're having problems falling asleep because those cycles seem out. Now ideally what works really well is for you to sleep outside under the stars and the moon. For thousands of years before we built great houses, we used to sleep out under nature and our body and our cycles was aligned with where the stars and the moon are. We don't have that now, but if you can sleep outside, just every so often, it can be really helpful for you. I've actually made myself a little outside bedroom and I'll sleep out there occasionally if I feel that I need a bit more balancing. Now, if you can't do that or you're not brave enough to do that, living in a big city might be a bit hard to sleep outside, then at least sleep near the window with the blind open so the stars can shine through and you can have a bit of contact with the stars and the moon. And what you'll find with that and having that in your pillow slip for a few days, your circadian cycle should start to get back into balance again and you'll sleep a lot better. There's no denying that we definitely live in a very yang or masculine energy world. And so regardless of your gender, it's really good for you to kind of nurture that feminine side of yourself. Sometimes we can become too aggressive, too assertive, and constantly chasing things. And our feminine side makes sure that we're more nurturing to other people and to ourselves, that we're gentle, that we're soft, that we take time to relax, and that we also tune into our intuitive aspects as well. Now a really nice way to do this is just to meditate with your rainbow moonstone and feel that gentle soft energy flow over you and nurture and develop within you. Ideally around the full moon, sit outside under the full moon and feel that energy and even make a ring of moonstones around you and sit in that. Maybe connect with one of the lunar goddesses whether it be Diana or Selene or Ishtar or any of that feminine energy that you really connect with. Now if you feel that you're kind of out of balance and you need to balance your feminine and your masculine sides and this is a really good thing to do on the spring and the autumn equinox is to get a moonstone and hold that in your receptive hand, the hand that you don't write with, this is our yin hand. And then you hold a sunstone in your yang hand and you feel those two energies ebbing and flowing between you and you'll feel and get a sense of which one needs a bit more um, emphasis or focus or balance. And you'll feel those two energies focusing on you. Now a rare treat if you can find it is a crystal called uh, Mo Sun Moonstone. And this is something I found in Tucson just recently. I'm not sure if the little flecks of sunstone are catching in it, but it's a dark moonstone with the sunstone in it. And this is kind of a two in one kind of crystal and you can just w work with that and you'll actually feel those two energies ebbing and flowing between you. It's really important that you balance those masculine and feminine sides so that you remain balanced. You don't become too aggressive, too assertive. And sometimes you know when it's great just to sit back and to be a bit more magnetic and draw what you deserve into your life. And the Rainbow Moonstone will really help you to do that. So when you're working with your Rainbow Moonstone, bring in other energies that harmonize with this crystal to enhance whatever you're doing. Firstly, you're gonna cleanse your Rainbow Moonstone, guess when, on the full moon. Place it outside for the whole night and allow that lunar energy to just wash over and bring that crystal back to its full potential. Of course, make sure you give yourself some time to sit out under the moon and enjoy that energy as well. That'll really help you to connect with this crystal. Now the animal guide that I'll connect with when I'm working with my rainbow moonstone is the snow leopard. So there are five great cats. There is the lion, the tiger, the jaguar, the leopard, and then the snow leopard. And of all those five, what the snow leopard is the only one that isn't able to roar. There's a beautiful story about how its roar was once taken off it because it was too loud. But that doesn't mean that the snow leopard is any less powerful. In fact, she's the most elusive of all the great cats. And what that shows you is when you tune into your feminine side or your goddess energy, that doesn't mean that you become weak. It's not about becoming soft or easily manipulated. You can still be feminine, nurturing, but very powerful. And Snow Leopard shows you how to do that. So if you need to connect with that energy a bit more, 
sit outside ideally on the full moon hold your moonstone in your hand close your eyes and visualize yourself there with a snow leopard and allow her to share her guidance with you on how you can remain powerful yet feminine now there are so many beautiful nurturing plants that I like to work with when I'm working with moonstone the first one is thyme now you can use this in cooking when you wear a sprig in your hair that's really good for helping your intuition or you can use the essential oil and you can anoint some on your third eye or diffusing it around a space is also very good for space cleansing as well and that harmonizes really nicely with the rainbow moonstone the next one is frangipani and frangipani has such a soft and blissful and very luxurious exotic energy so you know sitting near a tree and inhaling the blossom flowers the smell of that or having the flowers in your home or even diffusing frangipani essential oil is very good for getting you in that exotic kind of magical energy that is kind of encompassed within the rainbow moonstone as well frangipanis are often considered to be a great offering to the goddess as well so if you are communing with the goddess or that feminine energy then take some uh, frangipanis and leave them as an offering giving them and helping you to connect with that lunar energy a little bit more now for a tree or a wood I use maple and you can see a bit of maple on the bottom of this pendant that I'm wearing with my moonstone here. Now maple is very much also connected with the moon and this is very good for when you're going traveling. It helps you to be protected, it helps you to have luck and abundance and fortune, it helps your intuition and just make sure you don't run into trouble. So this is definitely a great one to work with when you're going traveling or if you have a maple tree with you then that's really good to sit under just before you go traveling. Of course you can get maple syrup as well and this reminds you of the sweetness of life and the pleasure of life and the sumptuous of sumptuousness of life so you know having a bit of maple syrup when you're working on moonstone helps you luxuriate a bit and enjoy the pleasures that mother earth gives us my final plant that i love to work with when working with the rainbow moonstone is called a night blooming cereus or a moonflower now this is a kind of gangly interesting looking plant but once normally just once a year on one night Ideally and often on the full moon what happens is one flower will develop and then it will open and blossom And it'll only stay open for that one night and sends out all this beautiful fragrance and by the morning It's wilted and died Now if you have one of these plants what you do is when you have that Special night when it actually opens and sit there and this is your time for manifestation and the mother to birth new creation Sit there with your moonstone visualize and measure uh, meditate on what you'd like to bring into your life inhale that perfume and really send that out to the universe just as that perfume goes out into the world it'll take your wishes with it so this is a great one to use as well now what day of the week should you work with moonstone the day that the moon regulates or looks after is Monday and when you think about it Monday is the day when we do often don't feel like being active or going to work or doing anything like that the moon looks after that and that's a day when we should be a bit more nurturing and meditative so if you can work with your moonstone on Monday, and if you get a full moon on a Monday, that's a double bonus, that's great. So moonstone has so many different applications, and it's a really good crystal to work with, especially around the full moon, to make sure that you don't go a little bit crazy or become a lunatic around the full moon, and you work with the lunar energy rather than against it. The more we can learn to work with nature, the better that is for all of us, but especially for yourself and your spiritual development. If you'd like to work with Moonstone a little bit more and meditate with it a little bit more, you can check out in my guided meditation range, there's a Connect with the Moon Goddess meditation. It's a 15 to 20 minute meditation where you go into a restful meditative state and you actually connect with that goddess and you can ask her questions or connect with her. So that one's the purple one, it's volume 7 and you can either get that on my website and the link and the details are down below or you can also download that from iTunes and the link. You'll find that also on my website or just look up my name Adam Barrelay on iTunes and it'll pop up there as well. Moonstone is such a beautiful crystal and I love wearing it. This is one of the pendants that I wear the most. I wear it on the night or the day of the full moon and either day as well. So there's a three day gap when the full moon energy is at its height and I wear that every month and I'd really encourage you to start working with Moonstone on those days, on Mondays and just whenever you need any of the attributes or traits or help that we've talked about in this video. Please let me know how you go working with your Moonstone. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you've experienced working with your Moonstone. And you can leave that in the comment section below as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Adam Barrelay. May the moon bless you. Blessed be.